Here today with the Asahi Super Takumar 135 mm f3.5 M42 mount adapted to the Nikon Z5. Try it out today, see how it works. 135 mm focal length, I think is very nice on full frame. But of course, that's going to be pretty telephoto. You have to keep that in mind with your compositions. Minimum focus is 150 centimeters. Maximum magnification of 0.11x. Full frame field of view is 18 by 15 degrees. This information is coming from the pentaxforums.com. It's a extremely common 49mm filter thread on there, so super convenient. I do like the 135mm focal length on full frame. To get this going with the manual lens, you have to go into the setup menu, non-CPU lens data, and then put the focal length and the maximum aperture for shake reduction to work. See that it's on. I also have it set up to do different buttons, zoom in, AF on, zooms in one amount, the video record button also zooms in and one of these front buttons. So depending on how zoomed I want to get, I can use whatever button to get focus, obviously, with peaking and everything else. Nice thing about this camera, you do get peaking when you're zoomed. This lens is beautiful. All metal, super smooth. Let's see how close we can get here. This is about the distance. <laughs> I must have sensed it. According to the Pentax forums, production years of 1965 to 1971, this is M42 mount, very adaptable to mirrorless cameras these days. I'm using it on the Nikon Z5, but can easily use it on pretty much any mirrorless camera, find the right adapter for it. M42 is a screw mount, takes a little bit more effort to take off and put on the lens, but I do really like this mount. It's simple, functional, works well. When you rotate the focus ring, the front barrel does extend from the lens. If you do use a polarizer on this lens, you won't have an issue with the front barrel rotating. It is fun trying out old lenses. In this case, probably be pretty nice for portraits and such. And the community post where I showed the three new lenses, or at least new to me, they had said it looks like a lightsaber. It definitely does. Maybe a little too thick. I'm not sure how thick lightsabers are, but well, this lens is kind of from the original era, most likely. It is challenging with the manual focus, trying to stay steady and zoom in at the same time. The aperture isn't anything to write home about, but I think it's within the realm of being usable. It's not the best for the bokeh, background blur, point source lights. It does have the six blade aperture, definitely not rounded through the range of apertures. Full metal construction on the exterior of the lens. The focus ring and aperture ring have machining on them for grip. I think that's the best way to do it. Works really well. Asahi or Pentax made really beautiful lenses back in those days with the M42 mount. I think they're always a great option for adapting with mirrorless cameras now. The uh, point is looking for something. Of course, we got the sun coming in here. It's always a good option, but I feel a little cramped. Let's try shooting off into the distance here. Oh, this is nice. Or it was nice for two seconds. I do have shake reduction on. I'd rather use that to give me the sharpest photos possible than trying to deal with my slow shutter speeds type of situation. As long as you understand the challenges of old manual glass, I think it's a great option. It's fun to mess around with. You have a huge multitude of mounts and things that you can use on these mirrorless cameras. I am partial to the Pentax Super Takamura stuff because it's metal, lasts longer obviously than junky plastic stuff. And it's just, if you do the smaller apertures, you're gonna get some really nice results out of them. I believe that is horse. I'm in the danger zone of horse droppings. This place used to be a tree farm. And you see what happens soon when they uh, stay and not get used. Got nice uniform trees. Looks super interesting. My specific copy is not radioactive, which is nice. I did have a 50mm f1.4 for many years that I uh, did find out it was relatively radioactive, so I eventually sold it. Once I knew, I didn't really want to keep it around. If you keep your expectations reasonable with a lens like this, considering the age, considering coding technology and everything else, then you can get nice results out of it, especially if you use smaller apertures. It was difficult in a lot of these situations. I wasn't writing down the aperture, so it's hard to say which photo was what, but I do think I got some nice pictures out of this photo walk. You will get chromatic aberrations, color fringing, and things like that. Obviously around f5.6, F8 maybe, you'll get some of the highest quality images out of it possible, but F3.5 isn't too bad. For these photos, I did adjust them slightly from the raw images just to get them a little bit more interesting than straight from raw with ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate. 
If I were doing JPEGs, they'd probably be more vibrant. I think the point is don't expect the world from a lens like this, but you can definitely get some nice images out of it with a little effort and using reasonable apertures. Overall, I'm very glad to have this in my lens collection. Build quality is nice. Photos are nice. Obviously, it's not something super impressive with the aperture, but given the price and everything else, it's fun to use. I enjoy it. Anyways, I'm Scott Photography Bonsai. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.